Hey guys, um, I'll try and make this quicker than it has been. I, I like doing videos. I, I feel like I'm kind of getting in some sort of groove with doing these videos again that I've kind of done just more back to my off the cuff stuff. But I also am worried that people kind of get bored and don't want to watch me for 20 minutes. So I'm trying, I'll try and be more efficient. I might fail, but I'm, I'm trying. It's in my, it's in the back of my head. Back of my head. Anyway, <laughs> um, I just got done watching the Flash, the, the pilot to the new Flash TV show. Um, this had been something that kind of had those levels of skepticism when I heard it was happening. Like, <laughs> yeah, right, we're not going to do that. He's a character that people know. You know, and then they actually put him in Arrow. <laughs> yeah, right, they're not going to give him a show. Then I heard the pilot got picked up. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't... I don't know if they could pull off the effects of a superhero show on a budget. I've seen Smallville. They No, no, they can't. They did in this first episode. I, I will say this up front. I feel like I knew this entire episode because I saw the giant extended trailer that I believe they put out for San Diego. I felt like I knew the entire plot of the pilot from watching that. I, I, I hate to spoil it for you. And there's some stuff that obviously isn't in the trailer that's cool to know, but... Like, if you just want to know the plot of the episode, you kind of could just watch the trailer, and you kind of get a gist. Which worried me, sort of. Like, I'm like, wow, this looks great. This is really long. I'm, they're trying their damnedest to get you interested by showing a really long trailer. And um, it just felt like a Flash comic on television. It was really cool. I've, I've been getting, well... I've always loved The Flash. I've been reading different things of him. Um, mostly, you know, obviously Jeff Johns' stuff, but I've been trying to get my hands on what I can of Wade's. Not counting the Wild West. That was awful. The one he did, like, when Barry and his wife went to the future and then came back to the present. It, that are, that was just awful. Anyway. But I thought the episode was really strong. It can be interested and engaged the entire time. I think Grant and Gustin, and I agree with everyone else, it was like, well, this guy could have been playing Peter Parker because he's got a real Peter Parker kind of vibe. <laughs> but honestly, thinking about it now, it's been in that. Since he's come back, the comics have sort of been doing that with him. It, it, it's odd, and it did not click. I always kind of thought they're just turning him into Batman, but more and more, I, I, the, the Peter Parker thing's fitting in. Um, this was my first time watching him, like, in character, because I don't watch Arrow. It, I, I did not get on the Arrow, the Arrow train. I'm sorry, the Arrow plane of the the Arrow train. I, I I tried the first episode, thought it was okay. Kept watching for a little while, then it kind of fell like many shows where it didn't interest me enough to remember to either watch it or record it. Mostly record because it was on during a time where I worked Tuesday nights, I believe. What I. I can't remember what night when it when it started, but I remember that might have been Wednesday. I don't know, but whatever night it was on, I always had to work, so I always had to miss it. <laughs> so it did not help, and I was, and you know, usually if I love something so much, I'll remember to record it a week in advance. Arrow was not Arrow was not fortunate, so I got cut. And then I tried to watch it on Netflix, like when the first season came on, and realized I don't care. Tried to watch the random episodes in season two. Really didn't care. Not that they were bad. They were not bad. I just didn't care. And I kind of realized Green Arrow has just been one of those things that I've never cared about. And I yeah, and I'm just like, I'm not gonna bother trying to get into something I never cared about in the first place. It, it it's odd, but it's how my brain works. I'm sorry. But yeah, so again, this was the first time I saw Gustin, and I really liked him. Um, the supporting cast was, let's see, it was, I didn't mind Iris. I don't know. She didn't annoy me. That's a plus. I really liked the guy who played her dad. I don't pay attention to this casting stuff, so I was slightly surprised and disappointed that it wasn't Ernie Hudson. Because <laughs> I heard he had got cast, and I wasn't aware that... Like he dropped out and they got a different actor. Uh, so, but I liked the guy who played him. I really liked him. He's my second favorite character, and uh, I liked that. Um, 
uh, and the the people at Star oh um uh, the people at Star Labs. Sorry, I'll, I'll stay on topic. People in I liked you know that trio. Okay, Caitlin was well. Hey, I, well, I, well, I kept making jokes that oh god, she's gonna you know jump into a Disney Channel movie because I know her and her sister did Disney Channel movies for a while. That and I was up late one night and I caught like the Disney Channel Rewind and I caught an episode of Phil the Future that was the Halloween episode and I don't know if it was her or her sister because they look the same and I can I don't know either of them by name but one of them played an evil cyborg so I I giggled a little when I saw her because I'm I'm silly but no I, I I thought she was fine I thought I thought JD's brother was fine. <laughs> No offense to that man, and I'm really curious after the end of the episode what his story is, but I just kept calling him JD's brother because I watched Scrubs when I was younger, and, <laughs> and he's from that, so I couldn't stop. And uh, Ramon, the techie guy with the long hair, I I did not like him. I thought he was really annoying. He, I, I tend to not really like those kinds of characters who are like, sweet man, we just saw a monster or whatever. You know, those kinds of guys who are... Don't get me wrong. I would be that character probably if I was in that situation, but for some reason it it, it I oh, I think it's just a case of we get it, you think this is cool, shut up. I I kind of get bored with those easily and this is only the first episode. Maybe I'll learn more about that guy, but um I didn't. I got annoyed with him very fast and it did not go away in this episode. Sorry. Um I, what, what do I all like? Oh, 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 um, John Wesley, John Wesley Shipp. Uh, he played, he's obviously well known for playing Barry in the old 90s show, and he plays his dad, and he only really had one, he had like only like two scenes, two, three scenes, and, uh, they were, well, it was him, you know, having a moment with young Barry, and then soon, Things go south. I... It, this is known, like... But, you know, things go south. He go he gets arrested. And it's that... It, you know, there's a scene where Barry goes to see him. And that scene I liked. And I'm glad that... You know, they're tipping their hat to that old show. Because that show's really good. I have that on DVD. And that show was really good. It's a shame. I, I can kind of tell why it didn't get... Didn't get picked up for another season. It looked as cheesy as it kind of looks now. It looked like it cost a lot of money. And from what I understood, it just didn't have the reasons to support it. Which is why I was afraid for this show. And kind of afraid for Agent Carter. <laughs> That's a period piece. I know those are not cheap <laughs> to make. And it's going to be a week-to-week -week period piece. I expect a lot of really obvious bottle shows on that show's future. But... Yeah, I thought I, I thought this show did a good job of kind of getting the look of the Flash, like how he moved. That's something that like I remember when I looked at behind the scenes stuff for like Justice League, and they struggled really hard to figure out what would hit. How could we make that look in animation? It, it, and that's another difficulty I'm really wondering. And I know Johns is really is is he. he he co-wrote this, I think. Yeah, so he. I hope. I hope he has a, a big hand in how they do it to kind of keep it real, or at least keep it. Because one thing that they mentioned, you know, when uh, Dwayne McDuffie mentioned when doing the Flash and animation is, it was really hard because theoretically, he can't be beat in any form. <laughs> so you have to figure out how to keep him, how to basically make him from. Being that a Mary Sue who fixes everything, you gotta have to do that, and I'm hoping that these guys can do that. Um, and I really like that we kind of set up a world, and we have this section that's because I think one thing about Arrow, and this is just an extension of what what Green Arrow tends to do, but Arrow just sort of looks like we're do we're going to. I, I'm not into vigilante fights crime much. Like, like Batman and Green Arrow I've always kind of found least interesting because 
I always was attracted to superheroes because of the fantastical elements. And Arrow and Batman, while do face that stuff, they do, they don't face it as same much as Superman tends to. So I, I always kind of found that kind of boring in comparison as a kid. And it sort of rubs on me now. That and the constant love for things I didn't have a strong feeling for. I hate feeling that way. <laughs> I, didn't, I never liked it. Isn't that cool? Yeah. I don't know if that makes me a hipster. I hope it doesn't. I, I, I don't want to be called one because I've seen <laughs> I've seen horrible things said to those people. Uh, uh, if you don't like the lifestyle, that's cool, but stop treating them like they don't deserve human rights. I've seen people who think hipsters are like the scum of the earth. And I kind of think, and I'm kind of wondering, do these people threaten livelihood? Sorry. Moral issues we don't need to talk about. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so The Flash, I really liked the first episode, and I'm going to keep watching. And I never thought another TV show would get me to say that. After Warehouse 13 ended, I kind of felt like, well, i got to wait every few years, it feels like, for Doctor Who, and that's kind of it. But, Flash, you got me. Hopefully, Star Wars Rebels will be that way. I've been hearing good things. I don't want to watch Disney XD, but if it's that good, I haven't watched... Um, Rebels yet. I, I missed it. I was thinking of watching it when it was like the big premiere movie on Disney Channel because, because, but then, you know, I had a social life and I hung out with a friend. A very nice friend that I like a lot. We'll leave it at that. And, um, so I missed out. I'm gonna catch it. I might just wait for the ABC airing because apparently there's a extra scene with Darth Vader. And I know that's dumb. To be like, I'm going to wait to watch that. But, James Earl Jones coming back, mofos. Come on. Come to F on. Um, anything else? Uh, not really. I I don't I don't know how often I've been keeping this, but I know I, in the past I've mentioned that uh, uh, my comic shop, my local one here, Trade and Tape Comic Center, uh, every year they have a week-long sale for their anniversary. It was their 39th, I believe. <laughs> You know, for a long time. And uh, they always have cool deals. Um, they have 50% off all back issues, regular back issues. They have, you know, stuff like bags where you get like 10 comics for 10 bucks. Like, put cool, like a bunch of like random bags. I don't do that because I don't read in issues. And uh, they have 25% off all graphic novels and trade paperbacks and all that. And so I figured this time around, if they had it, I was going to get it. I decided to get um, the most, I think this is, this is over the first half of uh, Greg Rucka's Wonder Woman run. Now, now I've, I've actually had this. This is the second volume, Bitter Rivals, for a while. Uh, but I was trying to get these two, because this is one and three, and then read it from the beginning, because I'm a stickler like that. And luckily, my shop had the two volume, those two, and they still have. I even checked today, the last day of the sale. No one touches those. <laughs> and even then, the last two volumes of Ruckus Run apparently aren't that hard to find right now. Like I see them pop up for not like because some of because some of these go for crazy. Like I got this for like like fifteen bucks, which is more than its cover price, but uh. This go I saw I usually see this go for like forty bucks, so I lucked out when I got this. I also got another thing. I kind of got this because um I listened to a podcast called Comic Geek Speak and uh, they were doing uh they were they were reviewing I think the first issue of Sensational of Sensation Comics, Sensational Comics, the uh, the Wonder Woman digital first book. And uh, they one of them uh, mentioned that the st like the main story in that book was similar to another Wonder Woman story. Um, this is called Gods of Gotham. Uh, this was um, the first four issue, first four issues in Phil Jimenez's run. Uh, it was co-written by J. M. DeMatteis. This is the four first four issues of his run, and they they said it was a pretty good story, just good self-contained single off story. And I happened to find this. Like, this was in one of their bargain bins. So I got it for super cheap, and I read the first, because it's four issues, I read the first issue and really liked it. 
I just don't. This is the first Wonder Woman I've ever like single solo Wonder Woman I've ever had. I can't. I I don't want to say red because I'm pretty sure I got suckered into reading so much JMS stuff, which was meh. I missed out on Gail Simone. New Fifty Two is not interesting to me. Like I I. I, I hear polarizing things about Azarello's run, and I'm not hearing real good feedback on what David Finch has been saying, so um, I'm kind of staying away from Wonder Woman. I did try to read Superman Wonder Woman, and I thought it was boring as hell. Like, the first two. Someone told me that book, I think it was Anthony who said that book's really good, but I I just couldn't. The, the, those first two issues really were, like, the, fir the first one, like, okay, maybe, maybe this is just a case of getting things set up and keep going. Second one was boring as hell, too. So I'm like, fuck this, I'm done. But now I hear that Doom story was really good, so maybe I have to get it. I have no idea. I have no idea. But this I'm really ready to get. I'm hoping... Now, like, like I said before, I kind of broke my own rules because I, I said... Because I still got a big backlog here that I wouldn't be buying any more comics until I at least cut that stuff in half, and I haven't, but... I like supporting my comic shop sale when it when they do it every year, so I I, I couldn't say no, and I wanted to get into Wonder Woman. I hear uh, um, that sorry, I, I, my brain stopped, and I'm getting close to that mark that I said I wouldn't go to. But I hear um, George Perez's run's been pretty good, and they're going to put. Like, they had him in four trades, and I hear they're going to do an omnibus. Someone said, like, they saw a listing on Amazon, but that listing's gone now. But it was listed before, so that means something. I might get that. I don't know. But i really excited to finally read Wonder Woman on her own and read a really good run and a really good single-off story. So, that's good. Uh, thanks for watching more of my rambling. I'm at the 17-minute mark. Bye. I don't want to keep you waiting.